hey, if you're new to Bam, it goes like this. You guys submit the art, and we guys redraw the art. Yeah, like it was a real animated show, but today we're actually gonna try something different. Hey you, so you wanna make an animated TV show. First thing you're going to need is a big idea. Big ideas are created by the showrunner. Next, you've gotta sell your idea to a Hollywood network. Networks front the money to actually make the idea, advertise the idea, and distribute the idea to a TV channel or streaming service. Then the public is going to vote on your idea with their attention. All three of these folks have the same goal in mind, an entertaining animated television show. And entertaining TV equals cash money. But like the old saying goes, you need to spend cash money to make cash money. So let's begin by renting a Burbank studio space to house the pre-production team. Together, they're going to make the four crucial ingredients for an animated program. The story, the design, the voice acting, and the animatic. But who's going to wrangle this ragtag team of artists? Enter the line producer, responsible for keeping the production on schedule and dividing up the money. The writing team is the most important part of the production. Because good writing makes the show. Even a show with bad art can still be amazing if the writing is great. They collaborate on each episode as a group and hand the completed script off to the line producer and showrunner, who then oversee a recording session with the voice actors. With the help of the sound editor, they then make a radio play. It's like a radio drama of your episode, complete with sound effects. The completed radio play and the script are now given to the design team, consisting of character designers, prop designers, and background designers, overseen by the art director, the most experienced artist on the crew. And together they draw rough sketches of the necessary characters, props, or locations. The artwork, radio play, and script are handed off to the storyboard team, spearheaded by the storyboard director. Combining all the assets made so far, they make a rough animated episode called an animatic. Their job is hard because they have to translate the written language into the language of cinematography. They must use staging, cutting, and action to amplify the emotion of the script. The animation is then adjusted for timing and clarity by the editor. Although rough, the animatic is basically the completed episode. All the artists use the animatic as a guide to clean up their rough sketches. Next, the big stack of black and white line art is handed off to the color team. Color does more than just fill in lines. It creates mood and lighting, all of which help tell the story. Once the color is complete, the production organizes and labels everything, completing the pre-production process. So, where in the building do all the animators sit? Well, little Brent, they sit in offices in different countries where it's cheaper to make animation. These other countries have the studios and infrastructure, and sometimes the tax incentives to handle this amount of drawings. Animation is a business, business is the bottom line, and the bottom line is, it's expensive to pay people who live in LA. Over the years, the studio system has found ways to outsource certain parts of the animation production. And although some animation jobs exist in America, a vast majority of it since the 60s has been outsourced to places like Korea, Canada, and South America. Ooh, look Brent, your animation is almost done. It just needs the last few ingredients, like timing, razzle dazzle, Sugar and hibbity hop. Quick, hand that thing off to the network. Hey buddy, the ratings are in. Looks like the folks are really, really into blue characters and not yellow ones. Oops. Looks like your show's canceled after one season. Better luck next time, Brent.